Meghan Markle urged me to get her in the tabloids the night before. The Duchess of Sussex articulated the demands of the media spotlight in a touching speech, but Katie Hind admits that she wasn't always so reserved. I was reminded of an evening I spent with the Duchess of Sussex at a rooftop club in London last weekend, as I saw the Duchess of Sussex cut such a wounded figure while speaking on television, her eyes white and brimming with tears. Despite having a prominent part in the US television serial Suits at the time, Meghan Markle was largely unknown outside of the country. As a showbiz reporter for a Red Top Daily at the time, her UK publicist had practically begged me to meet the actress for a drink, since she was eager to become well-known in Britain. I'll be honest, I had never heard of Meghan or Suits. Nevertheless, I reluctantly agreed, despite the fact that I had been rather anticipating kicking back in front of the TV. But there I was, freezing beneath an outdoor heater, sipping a bottle of Prosecco with Prince Harry's future wife on a windy November night in 2013. It quickly became apparent that Meghan was anxious to increase her profile, even if it meant attaching a pointless 80-word item to the end of my weekly column. We got along well, to the point where she asked for my advice on whether she should go on a date with football player Ashley Cole, who wasn't exactly a man blessed with woke sensibilities at the time. Overall, she appeared appreciative of my assistance. And we embraced. I watched her interview with Tom Bradby of ITV last weekend keeping this in mind. She said that although it may appear challenging to comprehend, the meticulous relentless UK media coverage surprised her. I had no notion, she adamantly stated. She continued by telling Bradby that despite being an American, she was extremely naive and didn't grasp tabloids. We first met at the Sanctum Soho, a five-star hotel frequented by celebs, back in 2013. At 8 o'clock in the evening, a woman with long, dark brown, curly hair and dressed in a stylish, albeit inexpensive-looking, black winter coat, dark pants, and stiletto boots met me. Her name was Megan, she said. I cautioned Megan against getting her heels caught in the decking because I had damaged a pair of prized gold shoes at my 30th birthday celebration at the same location two years prior. We joked that the jacuzzi would go unattended on such a frigid night as we sat at a corner table, mercifully next to a heater. Before she flashed her iconic Hollywood smile, she struck me as attractive but unremarkable. She was friendly, soft-spoken, and eager to talk. I could tell she was anxious to make me her buddy as she poured me some of the bar's house Prosecco into a disposable champagne flute. It wouldn't be unfair to suggest that my prior collaborations with her UK publicist, Neil Ransom, involved some less than outstanding personalities who were much more likely to have been on reality TV than on Hollywood red carpets. I've had numerous calls from agents and publicists to see their new client throughout my years as an entertainment journalist who is all too frequently a desperado looking for their 15 minutes of fame. These gatherings can be very taxing. But Megan, this client, was not one to give up easily. The tenacious Mr. Ransom contacted me numerous times to arrange the rooftop meeting, and I afterwards discovered that he had similarly bugged every other Fleet Street showbiz reporter. He eventually resorted to asking a mutual friend, a former journalist turned PR, to prod me when I was clearly proving resistant. The Prosecco will flow, she promised, and she suggested that we go together and make a night of it. They were determined to bring me to a meeting whether or not Megan encouraged them to do so. I was the Sunday People's show busyness editor at the time and a column.